Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. So as you can see, I've got the Dollar Bill Kramer neck in front of me. Today I want to start doing some wet sanding and buffing on the headstock. The fretboard has been completed as far as removing the frets, re raising the fretboard, installing the new frets, level, crowning, polish, and then using Thanks to Detroit Wrecker, the uh, feed in wax by Howard's, which I really love. It really makes this neck really look nice. The back of the neck has been clear coated, and as, I, as you can see, I left this here on purpose, kind of like as a, a reminder of what the original color of this neck looked like when I got it. And another thing is because it has a serial number over here, I didn't want to lose that by sanding or removing that off. Now, I'm not sanding to remove wood. I'm sanding to remove finish. So this would probably still be there, but it's not stamped in there. It's more of an ink that's on the neck. So I didn't want to lose that. So the neck has been clear coated on the back and then sanded back to give it a nice smooth finish. I got a little bit of oil because I still have a little oil on my fingers from touching the fretboard. But all in all, this is really, really looks nice. So what I have to do with this now is basically wet sand this, level sand it, and then give it a good buff. The headstock is not all wavy and shit like it was before, like the owner was showing uh, in his video that, you know, the finish of this guitar was a little bit on the wavy side it had some issues with it and he wanted me to correct those issues and fix some of the things that was going on with the finish and change up the burst that was on it now the burst that i have on here now is different than the burst that originally was on here the original burst uh a lot of the overspray got onto the actual front of the guitar i mean the whole face of the guitar and the back of the guitar. So the dollar bills had a smoky look to them. They didn't look like they were uh, like a, a dollar bill. They, they kind of looked like they were um, uh, dirty. I guess that's the way you could call it. And when I started doing the wet sanding on it, removing the black, luckily what he ended up doing was clear coating the dollar bills in before putting the black burst around the edge. Now the original black burst was kind of a, uh, a slow fade into a smoke look and then into the dollar bills, but again, the dollar bills had overspray on them. So now the dollar bills kind of pop out a little bit more. Now originally what you guys seen before was a mint green and I'd end up taking photos of it and showing the owner and everything else. And uh, I didn't like it. Okay, that's why it's different now. After doing the mint green, now anytime you put a base coat on something and you put a clear coat over that, it changes what that base coat is going to look like. Like the Squire bass guitar that I just finished, I put the candy apple or the candy orange on that one. When uh, Before I put the candy orange on it, it looked like a bronze, almost like a copper bronze look to it. But then when I put the clear coat on top of it, it really made that candy orange pop. You could really see the uh, metal flake that was inside of the paint itself, including with the black diamond spray that I use. If you look at that straight out of the can, uh, it's pretty much black. But once you hit it with a clear coat, the little specks of metal flake, well, whatever they call it to make it black diamond, uh, pop. You could really see them now. So without the clear coat, it's just, it's kind of boring and you add the clear coat to it and it just makes everything pop. Well, it's kind of what it did with the mint green. All right. It didn't look right though. The mint green was a mint green pearl. And what I ended up doing is I have another pearl spray, which is a in mixed in not with a clear, but it's a matte finish. And I sprayed it over everything. So the dollar bills have a little bit of a glittery effect to it when you look at it under sunlight. And under fluorescent lighting, it kind of, you kind of see it a little bit. Not as much as like outdoor lights, but the mint green didn't look right after I clear coated it. It changed and it just, I don't know. It just didn't do anything for do anything for me as far as what I'm trying to accomplish and the look that I have in my mind and stuff. Now this, what's on here, is 
partially the original color that the owner picked, which is called a optic green pearl. Now, when I first tried to apply the optic green pearl after wet sanding the black off of it, um, it was too transparent. You could see the lines of basically the edges of the dollar bill that were cut around the body. So the more paint that I tried to cover that up with, um, it wouldn't go away. You still would see it. From a distance, you'd say, okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. It came out the way it's supposed to. But when you get on top of it, you just see that faint discoloration of the edge of the dollar bill to the white of the body itself. So I'm thinking, okay, well, this isn't going to work. This is not going to give me the look that I'm looking for. And it's also not going to cover up what I needed to cover up. So I end up stripping that down. I sprayed around the edges all white, so it blended, uh, everything was blended together. There were some parts of the body itself that were sanded to the um, sanding sealer. That was like a yellow color instead of being a white of which the body was. So I smoothed it all out, blended it all in, sprayed the edges all white to one color, and started from scratch that way. Sanding down, wet sanding the top and the back to expose all of the dollar bill, uh, whatever, you know, gave it kind of like a white burst to it, more of overspray, got rid of all the overspray off the uh, top and the back of the uh, body, and started with the mint green, and it's like, okay, this is going to work. Once I got the clear on it, I didn't like it. So instead of sanding off the mint green and starting from scratch again, I left the mint green on. But this time, I sprayed the optic green pearl on top of it. That changed the whole look of the optic green pearl. And when I started looking at it, I'm like, this is what I want. This is giving it a different look. You're not seeing the uh, mint green, but yet you're not seeing the optic green pearl. It changed it into something else because of how transparent it was. So I put enough paint over the optic green to cover it, but not enough to really hide it. And it gave me the color that you're looking at now, which I think it's a lot better than going one way straight or the other. Another thing I end up doing too is if you look at where it says Kramer here, I kind of outlined it a little bit. The reason why I did that was because you couldn't see the Kramer logo. It's the same color as the dollar bills. There was nothing to break one from the other, so it blended in really good. So I decided to put a border going around the top of it. Now the Kramer logo has its own to pop out being framed out. All right, so enough being said about that. Let me get something to drink here. This stuff isn't bad. I bought uh, two bottles of these, which is a, kind of like a starter kit. These are the 16 ounces, I believe, about two of them, and a bunch of flavors. And you're able, this is that circle thing you see on TV, you're able to adjust the flavor to whatever you want. And now you're drinking more water. There is absolutely nothing as far as calories, sugars, anything else that is in this stuff. And it's just like you're just drinking water. Now, naturally, I drink a lot of Coca-Cola. And I stopped that and went to drinking Sprite. So I always end up cutting back on the caffeine. I'd have like a Coke every once in a great while. Just so I can like defeat the purpose of going through caffeine withdrawal. Sprite doesn't have any caffeine, but normally you would see the garbage behind me and it would be full of Coke cans for me sitting down here doing work and shit like that. Uh, and I was just a couple of Sprite cans inside there. Now I've cut completely out of pop. I tell you what, I feel a lot better. Uh, I'm actually can tell I'm losing weight and no more calories from the pop that I was drinking shit. This is actually not bad. These are and can be kind of expensive, depending on where you're getting them from. But if you buy the, uh, I don't know what you would call it, this part on screws and it's got the flavor in there, it's cheaper than buying pop. 
and so far I filled this thing up yesterday about six times and yes I was pissing like a racehorse all night but you know what my piss is clear and it's not colored and it worked out pretty good just it worked out the way that I wanted it to, to work out for being more healthier and uh, yeah so what can I say I'm trying all right, so right now everything looks good. I don't have to do anything with the fretboard. I've got my 1500 grit sandpaper soaking over here. And gotta get my two blocks because I have a curved spot here and a flat spot here. And I'm getting to this. <laughs> So I can start assembly. This is pretty much buffed out. It looks good. It's flat. It's not wavy. It's not bumpy. Yeah. All right. So we got the body over here next. You can see it's a nice flat surface already. Both sides, front and back. Not that much orange peel what's orange peel whatsoever I do have a bug here that I have to get out and a few spots that I need to level down now the way I do bodies is going to be totally different than headstocks depending on how the body is as far as the shape goes I don't know if you can see that there's kind of a sharp line not real real sharp but there is a sharp line that goes around this edge over here. Now, what I want to do is first focus on the edges, smoothing them out, getting rid of whatever orange peel, debris, bugs, whatever may have gotten to the finish, smoothing it out really nice with the 1500 grit sandpaper or 1000 grit, whichever you choose. I choose the 1500. Why? Slower cut. I could go with 800 grit sandpaper starting off this if I really want to cut this down really quick. I don't want to do that. So edges get trimmed down first as far as sanding goes. And I got my 1500 and I have a certain way of doing this, putting the paper between my two or three fingers and giving it a round edge like this and not applying too much pressure on each finger to leave marks in the finish like waves. So I'm gonna go ahead and these blocks out because they're in my way of the water and I'm just gonna go with my two fingers sometimes three and just go around this edge because if I could go and flatten out the top or the bottom first I'll lose that edge that is on here and I won't have that sharp sharpness that's over here if I sand the top first, block sand it, and then go ahead and start sanding the edges, you just kind of lose what was already there. Some guitars have a real, real sharp edge, and some of them have a slight round over. Now this has got a edge going into a round over, and I don't want to lose that edge. Now what I'm looking for when I'm wet sanding is to make the surface nice and smooth. So looking at it, if I get it in some light over here, you see kind of some shiny specks. That's what I don't want. I want to get rid of all of that. Otherwise, when I do the buffing, you'll see that. It'll come out and, and it'll have its own little, like, not reflection, but you'll see it. So all that's got to be removed.
All right, I don't see any clear specs. So now it's time to start wet sanding the top of this. And the reason why I keep putting my sandpaper in water is not to wet the paper and the surface of the guitar, but to rinse out whatever debris that's in the paper so the paper lasts longer. All right, so the reason why I didn't block this sand, block sand this area over here with the block, I'm gonna use a rubber pad on that because that is kind of on a slope. It's not an actual flat, flat surface. It's rounded. see how this thing looks so here's the headstock as you can see with the light in the bend it's pretty flat I'll be putting the tuners on there I've got the edges the focus is a little bit rolled a little bit frets are all new here's the fun part so, this is the pearl. It looks kind of like maybe an orange, real deep gold. It's not. But when the light hits it, and you look at it, in the bend over here, there's the glare of the light, and it starts changing. Over here was where there was a big problem, where the dollars were lifting with the finish off the body, because there used to be a pickup there. And what happened was, is they filled it with Bondo, and it started lifting. So if I get into the light, the edge of the light fixture it's flat all the way across yeah it ain't messed up anymore I secured it with CA glue inside of the chamber over here putting some pressure on there wait for the CA glue to dry and this is solid as a rock now body looks really really good it's all been buffed out wet sanded polished and also, let's see if I can get this in here really good. Trying to get it to glitter a little bit. Oh, there you go. You see with the light in the black of the dollars, that's the pearl coming through. also on the headstock and on the back of the body speaking of let's flip this thing over I'm gonna get my rag out over here to dust or clean whatever fingerprints and yes this is a microfiber cloth so that's the back of the neck
Inside the horns have been polished up. I polished the strap locks. These things were pretty corroded and I ended up polishing those up. Polished the screws for the back plate. Now in a previous video of this guitar you saw that this was black. It is. Underneath the paint and the clear coat it has been sealed with the uh, oh, what do you call it? Shielding paint. And then I also painted the inside here, which I'll clean up the residue from wet sanding. But yeah, again, the light. She is flat all the way down. And the nice thing about this as well is this curve here is perfect. There is no waviness or nothing in it. And like I was talking about with sharp edges, as you can see the edges on the top over here are kind of sharp. See it over here. That's why I sand the edges first and then I'll go ahead and hit block sand so you can kind of see that there's a little bit of a sharp edge going around the body over here. That's part of the body itself and the sides are nice and smooth. Yeah, this came out really nice. And it all matches really good. Now to assemble it.